Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Connor here. Welcome back to One Leads. And currently, I am on my own. Uh, do not worry. We have Dazzling Dave coming in about sort of eight or nine minutes. I hope you're doing fantastically well. I wanted to start this stream initially just to talk to you guys about the Wolves game, get your opinions in, and let me know exactly what you think. But guys, I've got three plaques to show you from Team Wall Art. We've got this beauty here, Ellen Road, which I got through today. Listen, I'm showing you because I know you'll love it. That Ellen Road one, which was beautiful. This is my favourite. Leeds United Legends. Here we go. That's the that's an absolutely fantastic one there. Finally, had to get it. Just had to get it. Marcelo. There you go, guys. Uh, one Leeds, 10% discount off Team Warlock. Go check it out. Shipping worldwide. And here we are. We're here to talk about Leeds United's trip to Molyneux on uh, on Friday night, an unusual game on Friday night under the lights for Leeds United. Uh, let me know exactly what you think. We haven't massively got the team news yet. It's going to be absolutely pivotal what's happening to certain players. Uh, me and Brownie will have your official preview out tomorrow. But let's talk about it. Graham Doyle with the first question. Con, what's with the hair? Mate, look at this. I've been wearing this, mate. I've been wearing this. Jack Grealish or what? You know what I mean? I prefer sort of like an Eastern European tennis player to Jack Grealish, but that's what I'm getting at this moment in time. I need a bow. But we're in we're in serious issues right now, and I think you guys are all in the same boat. <laughs> Maybe not as bad as this, but here we go. Um, Easy three points, says Johnny. Uh, apparently, we're linked with Douglas Costa from Juventus. I've heard that as well. Uh, it'd be an interesting one, Douglas Costa. I'm not 100% sure if... It'd be something I'd go with, obviously, the likes of uh, Crescencio, Somerville, who is in our 23s, so I can tell you. Woo! What a player. What an absolute player. Um, hopefully, he'll be coming into the starting lineup or the squad for Leeds United in the next, you know, coming seasons. What a talent he looks like. And and, and I think Leeds United at this moment in time have some serious players in that 23s. We saw Niall Huggins. We've not even seen Greenwood properly get a start. We've not even seen Joe Gelhard get a start yet. Gelhard, who has been quoted as the best one million pound signing in the Premier League era. So, I mean, there you go. What praise that is. Um, what is going on with Phillips? Is Johnny Horner? We don't know as of yet. Uh, I don't know if no news is good news, to be quite honest with Calvin Phillips. It's um, it's something we need to sort, isn't it? It's something we need to sort in the summer in terms of what we know with Phillips. It, there's, there's always a seasonal injury with Calvin and there's normally a couple of suspensions. And we saw the problem against Arsenal, didn't we, where there's so many players who need to move around to accommodate Phillips being out of this side. Leeds have to sort that in the summer and that is bringing in a new centre midfielder and I think that is on the club's essential list, to be quite honest with you. But will he be available for Wolves? That's going to be the key part of this, isn't it? We know that they've got some players out. If you got, if you saw the tactical preview yesterday, go check that out, guys. It probably breaks down a little bit more. But with regards to the central midfield, it's going to be massive in this game. And I didn't think that strike was the problem, if I'm being brutally honest with you. I think it was the whole team adapting to Arsenal's press. It was the whole team adapting to players being out of position, which which happens too regularly with this side when Calvin Phillips is out. So him being available in answer to your question, Johnny, we don't know as of yet, but it is absolutely... We need to figure out exactly what is going to be going on with him and how we, you know, make... <laughs> we, we need to figure out as a team, how to get around this Calvin Phillips problem because it is becoming a big problem whenever he's not available. Um, Gellhard is special, says Barry Whitwell. I can tell you, you know, from watching a lot of the under-23s, he is seriously special. What a special kid he is. Uh, Gordon White says, we need a result. We don't want Wolves doing the double over us. Looking forward to the podcast, Connor. Thank you, Gordon. Uh, I really appreciate your support as well, mate. As I said, if you are just joining, um, Dazzling Dave is going to be with us in about five minutes' time now to give us sort of a breakdown on Wolverhampton Wanderers, of course. Wolverhampton. Um, Vardy cost one million, mate. Joey has a long way to go. Facts, facts, and and there was also an awful one as well in there, wasn't there? In that one one million pound category, um, Eric Cantona going to scum one point two million. He's got some serious backing behind him, uh, which is which is which is good to see. Um, but yeah, um. Wouldn't have such a problem if Forshaw decided to rise from the dead. That is true. We just need to see a little bit more from him, don't we? I mean, 
I just don't know what's wrong with Adam Forster at this moment in time, but um, it, is, it is a big issue. Um, drama is best. A lot of people talking about drama. Connie, Mike is playing up. Yeah, we've had problems with this mic for ages. I'm going to try get a new one, to be quite honest with you. Um, but yeah, as guys, as I said, keep, keep your questions coming in. Uh, let me know what you think um, with regards to with regards to what is going on. Hannah Lucy says, hoping to see Roberts Friday. He's made an impact when coming on in previous games. That is true. Uh, do we know if Rodrigo is fit? He's not going to be fit for this one, but he could be fit for the next game, which is which is which is great to hear. Um, with regards to you know, uh, with regards to that, because he's a massive player for Leeds. Is Rodrigo just gives us a little bit of that X factor. Um, Dylan says, could do with bouncing back Friday. A couple of teams near us that we have next. Yeah, and it's it's a bit of a weird period, isn't it? Because we know we're staying up. We do know we're staying up. And I think that's a it's a common thing with Leeds fans now. We know that we're staying up, but we don't want to get into a little bit of a rut of losing games, do we? Because that's when fans are going to start to get a little bit nervy. But I genuinely don't think we need to this season. I really don't. I think we're absolutely fine. It's going to be interesting Wolves, uh, sorry, uh, Fulham tonight to see what they do. Fulham obviously playing Burnley. I think it's already kicked off Everton uh, City later on. But that's going to be a really interesting game to see what happens there. Um, Fulham definitely could get out of it. They could drag Newcastle right back into it as well. I think Newcastle's next game is scum away as well. So, um, Mayor Mayor is saying, I think it's time to write Foreshore off. Yeah, I mean, you'd love to rely on him, wouldn't you? But it's just not happening. It's just not happening. I don't think we're going to see him in a league. You know, would you want him to be in a lead shirt soon? I don't think we would. You know, we, we don't have that luxury of, of, of adding Adam Forshaw within the ranks. And it is a bit of a nightmare, to be quite honest with you. Um, a lot of people talking about Leeds want Europe. Dallas is a CDM as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, that'd be that'd be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> Guys, I'm just going to flick to a different microphone now. Might be a little bit tinny, but here we go. So we um but yeah, Dallas is CDM. That that could be something that we could look at. I just don't know if his defensive duties are going to be good enough, really. Um, watch your future lead star Harland later. That's it, isn't it? Uh, thoughts on having Rodrigo in a more attacking role? Personally, I don't see him reaching his full potential as CM when he is a striker. Yeah, it's it's a big one with 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 uh, Rodrigo. We don't really know what's going on with him because you know if leads do move forward and we do get another central midfielder. I mean, what on earth are we going to do with Rodrigo? Is he just going to come on as a nine? Is that going to be how we're going to see him going forward? I don't know. It's going to be, it's going to be a bit of a, a weird one, to be quite honest with you. It's going to be a weird one going forward. I don't know whether or not he's going to be that next guy in line. You know, that next guy in line to be, to be, to be just coming off the bench. You know, it's, it's a strange one with Rodrigo and one we can't put our finger on. But persistence is that thing with Leeds United, isn't it? It is persistence, and I think Marcelo Bielsa is going to persist with Rodrigo. Um, Mayor says, please stop banging on about Europe, people. Stupid. Yeah, I get it though, Mayor. I get it. It's not, it's not that far away, and it's a pipe dream, isn't it? It is a pipe dream, and something that we all want to do as fans. But. Um, is Click fit to play? I think he is. Um, I think he is. Uh, Click is fit to play. That's what I've, that, that's what I've, uh, I, my understanding is. Uh, but we don't know. We, we we have no idea, which which can always be a problem with Leeds because you don't know until the last minute. But we think Click's all right. But who knows, guys? Don't put your finger on it. I, I really wouldn't. Um, he said he had a hip issue, and, and 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 hip problems can be can be they can be big, really. You know, they can keep you out for a sustained period of time. Um, a text message there from uh, Dazzling Dave, who is just coming now, which is great. Uh, baby steps. Uh, there is time for Europe, as Hannah says. Uh, time to build first. I'd agree with that. A lot of people are talking about Ben White uh, being linked with us for 40, 50 million, which is mad. Uh, I don't know where that's coming from. I've not seen that. Someone link me if you want to. Uh, if you want to DM me on, on on Twitter or Instagram. And and guys, we are we are lucky enough to be joined by a Wolverhampton Wanderers fan, Dazzling Dave. Um, his link will be in the description uh, below. Uh, let me let me, uh, let me me just get Dave in now. Dave, how are you doing, mate? You okay? Hey, how are you doing, Connor? You all right, mate? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. Um, I've, just had, I've just had my tea now, so I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, isn't it? you got it, mate. I've, I've not had mine yet, and I'm getting... I can already hear. I can already hear rumblings in the background that my family aren't happy with that one. 
I've had some pasta, so it was all right, mate. Nice and quick. So how was you? How was everyone? Good? Looking forward yeah. to the game Friday night under the lights at Molyneux. Shame we ain't got the fans there, though, eh, mate? That is, it is, mate. Um, that's that's the thing. I think getting fans back down there is, it is it's essential. Isn't it? and, and, and Dave, I think that's it. It's a good point to touch on, mate, initially. With regards to Wolves, I've said it in my tactical preview, which I've done on the channel, um, We've had Sheffield United so far this season, obviously, who seem to have been affected by fans not being in from moment one. Would you say Wolves have been equally as effective? Because for the past two seasons, Wolves have been, have been unbelievable intensity-wise from minute one. And now it seems like it takes Wolves such a long period of time to get to that, that, that stage where they're really performing. And we even saw that at Ellen Road. Well, uh, to be honest, I think it's affected every team, uh, to be honest, Connor. But I, the thinking behind that is that if you look at the stats for the amount of home wins and how it's dropped this year, that you can just see how much an important factor the fans make. I think I definitely agree with you. You look at Sheffield United and their, um, you know, sort of siege mentality that they have with their fans and how they used it last year. Since the lockdown, even towards the end of last season, they really went on a losing run for, for so long and they kind of lost their mojo, didn't they? They're trying to fight back now, but I think it's a bit too late. And I think you can say the same about Wolves to an extent. Um, you know, I'm not trying to make that as an excuse for our our form. Um, obviously, we just picked up in the last two or three games with a few results which we needed. But, yeah, it's affected us because um, Molyneux... You know, and it, if we'd have had the Leeds fans there Friday night, um, I mean, because Leeds fans make noise wherever you go. The atmosphere would have been electric and, yeah. you know, we can make a bit of a noise. I think the uh, the thing for me with Wolves this year that's affected us quite a lot uh, compared to last year, because we had two seventh place finishes. We had the Europa League quarter final, didn't we? Losing 1-0 to the eventual winner, Sevilla. But we only had two weeks break at the end of the season. Um, so no real downtime. Then we, we've we obviously sold Jota 45 million. You saw how well he was doing for uh, for Liverpool. A lot of people in the Wolves uh, community and fans wonder why we sold Jota 45 million. You know, it's a, it was a good deal. He wanted to go. If your player doesn't want to be there, go. And then Doherty went to Tottenham. I don't think it's worked out quite so well. He's been at Wolves for 10 years. We bought him for £80,000 from Bohemians in Ireland and we sold him for £12 million and he had 10 years. Can't blame him for a new uh, for a new challenge. And then, because we play so well with our wing-backs. And then uh, Johnny Otto, who's the other wing-back, he gets an ACL. So you lose both of your wing-backs uh, that are used to playing the system. That affected us quite a lot. And then we've had a few injuries. We had that key injury uh, to Raul Jimenez. And we were saying as Wolves fans on the podcast, what if we ever lose Jimenez, what are we going to do? Because he links everything up. And that's come to fruition. And we've lost Bolly as well. And we've had Nuno's tried to change it to a back four. And I don't think that's a wrong thing to do because he wants us to be more attacking and like what Leeds are, have more shots on goal. But as probably Leeds fans have found, sometimes when you're a bit gung-ho, in the Premier League, I mean, you get away with it in the Championship, but sometimes the chickens come home to roost and you get can get caught with your pants down at the back. That's what, what has happened to Wolves as well. And he's tried to put round pegs into square holes and recently reverted back to the to the back three to tighten it up again. The, um, the results have started to come through. We got lucky against Arsenal. We should have been 4-0 down after half an hour. Hit the post, goal disallowed, fantastic saves. Um, and then we had that penalty right at the end of the half and they ended up down with nine men and we got a battling draw against Leicester. Probably should have won that with an opportunity. And the second half against Southampton was probably the first time we've seen the real Wolves show up in a long time. And it's no real surprise that Johnny Otto is just coming back into the team. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it is, it is strange with Wolves. It is such, you're such a 45-minute team. and But when you are on it and we saw it at Ellen Road, Dave, it was it was chalk and che it was chalk and cheese. I mean that first half we Wolves Bastards. Yeah, the Wolves notoriously have this strong defence and we really struggled to break it down. And but I, I thought we had some half chances. I mean overall, Dave, how would you reflect on that game and, and do you think that's going to be how how this game's going to result in it's as well? Funny, it's funny you should say because on my match preview, which 
guys, uh, Connor's on that as well, so check that out. Um, I've gone for a 1-0 to the Wanderers because I just think um, it might be another 1-0 job because we, we can't, you know, Leeds has got so much going forward attacking-wise and um, Wolves have struggled with goals. So it might be a 4-3 or a 5-4. You just don't know. I've always said one of these days we're going to score a few goals, but it, but I've just gone for the 1-0. If I can get 1-0 again, I'll be happy. If we can shut you guys out from scoring twice, that would be unbelievable with the amount of goals that you score and the firepower that you've got. Yeah, I think I think we've only conceded. Uh, I think um, teams have only shut us out, I think it's four times a season. I, I, think, it's, I think it's you, Bright and Spurs and, and someone else. I can't quite remember. But in, in terms of... In terms of, uh, I, I wanted to touch on sort of two men, really, who I thought were absolutely brilliant at Ellen Road, especially in that second half. There was Daniel Pedence and there was Raul Jimenez. How how pivotal are those two being out for, for Wolverhampton Wanderers, Dave? Oh, mate, absolutely massive. Raul Jimenez, in my opinion, is a world-class striker. He's got everything. He's, he's got real strength. He's got height. He's got a fantastic header on him. Um, he's got he's got a left foot. He's got a right foot. He scores from outside the box. I mean, you saw that one volley earlier in the season when the ball came out. He just volleyed it in. I can't remember who it was against. He's got a poacher's instinct. But more than that, he links the play up so, so well. We've had Fabio Silva that came in. Um, young lad. We paid £35 million from Porter. Supposed to be the next wonder kid. Um, a lot of Wolves fans are like, £35 million. He's got technical ability, the, the lad has. Um, he's got great hair as well, but <laughs> he has. And um, he scored a couple of goals. He took a penalty. He scored a good goal against West Brom. But he still hasn't got that physical presence. The yeah. one, and, and he has missed a few sitters. He's missed two headers inside the box, inside the six-yard box. Another one is skied over. I think it's a confidence thing. But the one thing I would say about Fabio Silva, he does get in the position. You can see he's got the eye and the runs. He's just a young lad thrown in. He's one for the future. And I think they were hoping that we could rely on him. Wolves have gone into the transfer market and bought in uh, William Jose, um, Brazilian, 29. He's been, a, he's been around a bit. Um, he hasn't scored yet, so he's due one. <laughs> I know, yeah. But he is, he's, he's more of a focal point in terms of similar style of play to Raul. Um, probably not on Raul's level, he, as I say, he hasn't scored a goal yet, but he did make the run for the penalty that we got against Arsenal. I'd expect he'll start. Daniel Pedence, he's like our Hazard. He's very, very small. He's like five foot four or something like that. He's tiny. But again, he's out injured again. And um, he's out for another four. He came back for a couple of games, got out injured again. And he's got a little bit of magic about him. So both of those being out going forward is really cause the problem because they can create something out of nothing, especially Daniel Pedence. So what's if so how I how I look at Wolves Dave is if you show them down the line on the wings, if you show Triore and Neto down the lines, and, and let's say Fabio Silva's starting, I'm fine with that because I don't think he's that aggressive in the box. No. Now are you trying to say is is someone like William Jose? Do you believe that if you do show your wingers down the line, he's an aggressive attacker and can cause? Yeah, the... I mean that, that's exactly it. He's strong. He's twenty nine. He's, expra- he's played at um, you know high levels. Um, he's come in. It's a dream move. He's on a loan with a with a with a view to a a uh, seventeen million pound transfer. If he does well, he'll want to prove himself. He's always he's got his opportunity. Tottenham were in for him last year, and then it fell through. So if Tottenham were in for him. Uh, with uh, Jose Mourinho, and it didn't quite happen in the end. You can see he's got some pedigree about him, uh, and he's got a lot of experience. So, I mean, I've seen quite a lot, that, in, especially with Traore. Um, you get two and three defenders on Traore trying to show him down the line, and he can beat them. But in a lot of ways, people have found us out. against. Um, interestingly enough, against Southampton in the week, um, we were absolutely pants in the first half. 
Triori kept falling over. We couldn't get Pedro Neto into the game. And I'll, I'll, you, you want to talk about him because he's, he's somewhat special. He is. Yeah. And Nuno did a tactical switch in the second half. He switched them flanks. He switched them over, inverted wingers, which meant they were more able to come into the middle of the park as well as going out. I've always liked Triore when he's got more space to run into. When he's pinned on one side and he's got three defenders to, and he can beat them, but it's a lot harder to do. If he's got space to run into forward, left and right, and you've got that on the other flank as well with Pedro Neto, then there's panic in the defence. You could see that what happened with Southampton, it completely changed the game. And I wouldn't be surprised if he switches some wings and maybe sticks with that. And the other thing is as well, I think because Triori had a good relationship with, I think, Johnny Otto and Johnny Otto back in the team, he... And he was on the side with Semedo, who's come from Barcelona, very fast as well. A little bit weak defensively, playing the wing back role. But they were crossing, they were getting in each other's way. And he switched it and it just it just all opened up second half. I was like, where has this team been for like 17 games? They've just suddenly appeared. It's like so we can still do it. But the big question is, can we do it again? Um, yeah. Have you, I mean, is there is there any sort of uh, game of guy Ethan here it's found the channel? Um with regards to any Leeds player, we, when we played you, Dave, I mean, we, the problem is we've got so many changes now because I think I think we had Stuart Dallas at left back. And as it is with Leeds, now we've got Dallas in central midfield. Alioski is going to be playing. Calvin Phillips might be out. Click might be out. Rafinha is going to be in for Costa. Um, I presume you've seen a lot of Rafinha. Uh, he's he's uh, probably one of the most phenomenal players in the Premier League at this moment in time. I don't know if you've if there are any players at, the, at this moment with Leeds who are sort of scaring you because it is, it is quite crazy that, that Leeds are above Wolves. <laughs> um, to be honest, I'm not surprised that Leeds are where they are because, you know, you've got a great, you've got a very good manager and you had that momentum last year. If you look at Albion, for example, that have come up, they literally, how they got promoted last year, they only got promoted because... Brentford blew it. They literally, it was like a, a a marathon runner and they literally just stumbled over the line and they've been sort of fell over for, for a lot of the start of the game. Leeds had that momentum, just like Sheffield United did last year, that momentum, that confidence, and you've carried it on. And there's no fear in this Leeds team, no matter who you play. They just go, right, well, just bring it. We'll, we'll slug at you and you slug at us and let's see who's standing at the end of the game. So because you're quite positive um, and you've got that attacking um, and you're quite clinical, you've scored 15 more goals than Wolves this season, I think, uh, in one less game, but you have conceded 10 more goals. I think that said its own story. But Patrick Banford, I think he's really come to fruition this year in the Premier League, for me, he's got he's got that all round play. He's got an eye for goal. He's good in the air. He holds the ball up. He's your typical striker. So, uh, I was talking um, with uh, Leon from Ball Sports um, earlier on. He's they're like a um, betting company, and they've got uh, Patrick Banford down to be the first goal scorer for this one. Yeah, I mean, that's that's that is interesting. I think with regards to team scoring early against again I mean what do you do with Wolves in terms of that Dave because you guys come into it really in the second half is it is it just key to sort of get one or two goals ahead before that second half I'll, t- I'll tell you what mate I'll tell you what I mean we were losing 2-0 to Southampton away last year and we won 3-2 so I mean anything's possible with Wolves it could be 3-0 there. I mean but look at Leeds at the weekend against Arsenal 4-0 down in the first half and they were scared at 2-0 you had a chance at uh if that had gone to 4-3, that last few minutes would have been insane. Yeah. Great game. Um, here's a stat for you that is gonna, which you're going to roll your eyes at now because you're going to go, oh, no, oh, no. Wolves have not scored first in a Premier League game against anyone for something like 17 matches. We've uh, had a couple of shutouts, but we have not scored first against anyone in the Premier League for 17 games. And so... Sooner or later, we're going to score first. And when Wolves do score first, I think we've only lost one game in the Premier League. So something like that in the since we've been. Never, it's because you never take the lead. That's why, Dave. We, we, <laughs> well, exactly that. Yeah. We don't take the lead. But like, um, yeah, I mean, we did it. We, 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 we were beating Brighton three one at home earlier in this bad run, and we ended up drawing three three all. But I do have to put a disclaimer on that. Brighton are our bogey team. 
We the first year up in the Premier League, we played Brighton away. I was there. We absolutely battered them from side to side. We had about like twenty shots. Their keeper pulled off miracle saves. There was VIR decisions. There was post sit. They had one shot in the Brighton had one shot in the two games we played as played them last year, and um, they got four points. <laughs> it's bad. So, um, but yeah, no, I mean. Uh, yeah, we do tend to be a bit of a second half team. What Wolves fans are are looking for is for us to play both halves. Some, there has been occasions this year where we've done well in the first half, and then they've gone on holiday. They must have been put their put their put the slippers on the beach, and <laughs> said, oh well, we've done it in the first half. Now we don't need to do it in the second half. Uh, the only time I think we've played completely for ninety minutes was against Crystal Palace. Uh, and we okay. really exactly the same. <laughs> Maybe it's a Palace thing, I don't know. <laughs> but we we did play well uh, against Crystal Palace. Uh, Neves was on it in the middle of the park, and to be honest, it, it, Ruben Neves is on it in the middle of the park, and he's on his game and he's pinging the balls about. Um, then Wolves tend to tick, um, and he has been a little bit hit and miss. But in that bad run, his wife was. Um, very heavily pregnant. He actually watched the birth of his child because she's in Portugal on a phone on the on the on the coach on the way back from a match. I mean, because obviously because of the COVID situation, they just can't see their families or anything, which was hard. I think since the birth of his child's been, he's obviously can affect that he's kind of like that's sorted. And he's been a little bit more on it in the last two or three games. So maybe that was weighing on his mind as well. Yeah, no, definitely. It definitely plays a part, Dave. I think I think we all know that there's so many circumstances now surrounding what everything that's happening that it's uh, it's difficult to just purely focus on football. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess Dave. Sort of, I, I know, I know, uh, we've only got you for a certain amount of time. Um, I, I, can I can I press you for a score prediction, mate? Well, I think as I said earlier on, I'm going to go with a one nil. Okay. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if it ended up being five four because so, uh, uh, sooner or later we're gonna we, we are we've been saying it all all season. Sooner or later we're gonna absolutely whack someone. We're gonna we, we, we're gonna you know it's gonna be one of them games where you shoot and everything goes in. Yeah. And we haven't had one of them. And I've been it's it's due. It's overdue. We're overdue to score first. Not saying it'll happen tomorrow, but like if we can shut you out and sneak another one nil, I'll be well happy with that. If we can score a couple more, I'd be even more happy. But it's going to be a tough game. I'm just really sad. Um, you know, I mean, I really wanted to go to Ellen Road earlier on in the season. A fantastic uh, ground. Fantastic to see Leeds back up into that. I mean, as Leeds, as a Leeds fan and everyone on here who's watching, and as a Wolves fan, I know how much you guys have suffered. Have suffered over the last 15-odd years going down to League One, having all that heartache that happened, there being no hope to get him back into the Premier League. And as a Wolves fan, similar things sort of happened to us. We went down to League One. Yeah, we did bounce back in the one season and we've been through the mill. So, But when you get back into the Premier League and you're doing well and you're consolidating, it means so much, doesn't it? You know, because you've literally been through, you know, crap. To come back to the, the top. Do you know what it is, Dave? That's why I I like. I think we all, as Leeds fans, you know, well, I can't speak for every Leeds fan, but we like. I like Wolves because I know I I know they get the the up and down, and I like teams who who get the up and down. And with Leeds, Dave, I mean, we're Champions League semi finalists, mate. People compare us to Sunderland and Portsmouth, big clubs going down. Like we were Champions League. Uh-huh. Semi final, we made the entire nineties. We were top six, top seven. That that was it. And and yeah, mate, it was. Uh, we've we've had a lot of pain as Leeds fans, and 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 it's uh, it's it is good to be back, mate. That's why it's so difficult um, to enjoy it because a lot of us are that anxiety ridden. We we just because it always goes wrong with Leeds. So it's 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 just we're just. I know exactly what you mean, mate. Because that's exactly us. Like this year, it's like oh, we've done well. We got seventh. We got to an FA Cup semi final. We got to quarterfinals of the Europa League. Got another seventh, and then all of a sudden you are, you know you ain't won in eight or nine games. You can see yourself going like this. You're like. Yeah, that's it. That's but it. I, I kind of know that anxiety. But I think the, the the big shame is for you guys this year is like you've got promoted to the Premier League, 
And the one thing that's missing is you guys being at the stadium to cheer your team on. You've had to watch from afar, and that's been tough. So I'm so glad that you're looking like you're going to stay up for next season. Um, well, I've pretty much cast on. I think you need maybe one more win, not tomorrow, not Friday night, mind you, but you need one more win. I think you're pretty much there and dusted. We need a couple. And hopefully, you know, you'll be able to enjoy next season in the Premier League with, you know, going to the game, all the atmosphere, the build-up, the buzz around the stadium, the anticipation, the game, and then all the aftermath, because that's what we miss more than anything. It's great. I mean, I don't know whether you find this. It's watching the football. You watch your own team and it's like wall-to-wall football. And sometimes you have it on. It's like watching the snooker. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. it, it is, isn't it? It's yeah. on all the time. You just, It's just there. I think with us, Dave, as well, and you'll know you've, you've probably been to, to Leeds yourself and you've experienced you know, Leeds fans. The thing is, with, with regards to being out of the league 16 years, Leeds haven't been touched by tourism. So any time you get Leeds fans at the ground, it's, you know, 35 to 39,000 just like like baying for, for, you know, and the passion is and the noise that you get from Ellen Road. And I think it's going to be a real eye-opener for a lot of Premier League teams coming to Leeds and experiencing Ellen Road and experiencing that hostility. Like, we all can't wait for Man United to come down because... It's going to be absolute chaos. Oh, I, 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 I tell you what, I went to Man U away, and I was at, in, at the Old Trafford, and I was expecting the, this huge noise, and it was like, like it was so quiet, and I was like, really? Yeah. You know, where's the, where's the passion and stuff? And I think sometimes when you've, I mean, you've had success, and you go to these teams that are like, you know, they they don't really appreciate just what it means to be back. And that's where the passion is because you've been hurt and you're back and you want to get behind your team and there's that passion. And sometimes I just think teams that have been here for a very long time winning trophies, they just take everything for granted and you just you just can't take it for granted. So I think it's going to be fantastic for you guys uh, next season uh, to be able to... Can you imagine that first game when hopefully in August... You know, we can have fans back into the stadium. Can you imagine what that's going to be like? It's going to be insane, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I can't. I can, yeah, it's going to be. It's, it's, it gets you excited thinking about it, doesn't it, Dave? But I just, yeah. I just, I just hope it's not too far away, mate, because we we all miss it so much, don't we? Well, it's been. I think the last game I went to at Molyneux was March last year. It was Brighton. It was a nil-nil ball draw. It was Brighton. Say no more. <laughs> Brighton nil-nil. And um, it's been nearly 12 months now without being able to go to uh, go to. Well, it's your, it's your spiritual home, is it not? Your stadium. It's like yeah. it's your spiritual home. And it's it's been 12 months and it's like I just hope we can get back in August. There's, there's hope that things are starting to look up. But whether or not we'll be back to full stadiums or part stadiums or not, I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. But I really hope um, that, you know, I can go away to Ellen Road next year because I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to that one. That being a fantastic experience to go there as an away fan. Yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, Dave, uh, I don't know if you've, I don't know if this is, uh, I think Michael Brown just put, Dave, I really enjoyed your interview with the daughter of the legendary Billy Wright on your Wolves podcast. Um, we've got some nice comments as well. We've got uh, Tenbury. Wells Martin, I'm sure he's from your channel. Dave's a local hero, helps out with food parcels for the Wolverhampton area. So it sounds like you're you're a hero, Dave. So I'm really happy for getting you on, mate. <laughs> oh, I don't know, I don't know about that. I do what I can to help uh, the foundation, um, the Wolves Foundation, and I, I, I help out. Um, we have this thing called Samosa Saturday, run by uh, uh, a fellow friend of mine, uh, Manny Singh, and basically he makes a load of samosas, and he normally has a stall. Uh, once every quarter and people donate it all goes towards dementia uk we haven't been able to do that but what i've been done is i've been a delivery driver so we went and picked up picked up a lot i have about five seven or eight addresses and they drop them off and the fans donate and it all raised it raised uh, last weekend it raised about three thousand pounds for dementia uk which is uh, a very important and horrible horrible disease um and like you do you just do what you can to to help where you can don't you it's, that's that's it really. It's not a lot, but I do do a bit to try and help if I can. Yeah, top man. Yeah, absolutely top man. Um, Dave, 
it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. You've uh, you, you've really helped me out on this one. So thank you so much for coming you're on. You're welcome. And you're going to be 11 o'clock um, Saturday morning. We have a post-match uh, phone-in show uh, where we have a load of Wolves fans that ring in to talk about the game on video live. And we've got Connor coming on live on that one at 11 o'clock uh, Saturday morning. So, um if you're any Leeds fans uh, fancy doing that, my channels, it's just just search Dazzling Dave Walls, you'll find me, and you'll be able to come and see Connor on that one. And he's also on my match preview for today as well. And what did you go as your score prediction? <laughs> draw one it you went for. I think I've gone for a draw, mate. Yeah, one one. I, it just wolves, it's the wolves are a nightmare. They just they do not fill me with any. It was just how it, you've got so much flair and you're just so solid at the back and it just it's it's leads is crypt tonight if you, if you if you apply that high press from moment one um but I, you know what dave i also thought there were there were moments in that first game where we really could have buried a couple oh, of oh absolutely moments. i'll tell you what you haven't talked about just quickly leeds fans look out for this young man pedro neto he is he is something. He, you, 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 you go on about Jota. I think he's going to be better than Jota. He's very direct. He scored that amazing goal um, to win the game against Southampton. He's, he's only just turned 20 years of age. He is going to be some player. If he's on it, he, 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 he can cause mayhem. He really, he, he's so, he's very, very direct. And yeah. he's just, he just keeps going. So uh, he'd be one for you to watch tomorrow. Uh, sorry, Friday night. Yeah, what a player. No, I, I love him. Very, very good player. Very, very well. And then, Dave, the one for you to watch, mate, is Rafinha. And, uh... Yeah, no, he's quality, mate. He's quality. <laughs> I think it'll be a good game, to be honest. We know Leeds are going to come out and have a go. And, you know, we, you know, I think you'll probably come out right off the blocks. If we can get through the first 15 minutes without conceding and ease our way into it, I can't see us going gung-ho. But you just don't know. Do gung-ho against Leeds, I can't... You, you can, it would be like how it would be like a basketball game, wouldn't it? So that isn't really our style, but we are quite good at hitting teams on the break, or we used to be. And with Traore and Pedro Neto on the field, we do have pace. So if you are pushing forward, we might find that we'll catch you on the uh, the because you just play the same whether you're home or away, don't you? Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. We'll just go. Well, we will just go for it. And the thing is, Dave, if you've got we play a man-for-man -man system, and if you've got quality to get past this man-for-man -man system, that's when yeah. leads become really open. And that's why we always struggle against the top sides, because we'll go man-for-man, -man, but if they surpass our man-for-man -man system, we, the, the, it opens up, and that's what we found against Arsenal. To be honest, Dave, when you've got 10 championship players, seven yeah. first teamers out... And you've got you've got players playing in all sorts of positions for Arsenal to be celebrating like they were beating us four two when you got Hello? like Aubameyang, Pepe, Odegaard, Saka, Emil Smith Rowe, all this lot when you when they were that happy about beating a newly promoted team with that many players out, it was more of a compliment, Dave. Well, to be honest. It, it exactly is, and our back three are all midfield were midfielders. It's the back three because Bolly's out injured, who's our best defender. He was he's magnificent. It'll be Cody in the middle, as you'd expect, playing that in the middle of the, the three. On the right, you'll have uh, Leander Dendonka. Well, he plays in midfield for Belgium. Uh, he'll be playing at the, and then on the other side, you've got you'll probably have Romain Saïs. He's he plays for Morocco generally. Uh, he does play at the back or in midfield. But again, all of those players and Neves, they were all they all were there with us in the championship as well. So we're kind of similar in 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 a lot in so many ways. The two clubs, we are They've got that momentum and the, the players have stepped up a level. Mm. Um, and you know, I think you'll be good. You'll be better for it for next year. I I think if you can keep your best players this year. Take what you've got out of this the rest of the season. Have another good transfer window in the summer. You'll have a really good, a solid season. If you can just get a bit tighter at the back, who knows next season? But I hopefully Wolves will bounce back next season because we'll have some rest time and, you know, because it hasn't been a great season for us. So I, I can see uh, Wolves and Leeds next season pushing potentially top six. 
But I'd probably say to win the league, to be honest, Dave. It's going to be. Imagine that if it was like, um, you know, last match of the season, Wolves versus Leeds, winner takes all. That would be something. Yeah. 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 Um, Well, Dave, we'll end it there, mate. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Cheers, Dave. And I'll see you 11 o'clock Saturday. All the best. Take care. Enjoy the game, guys. Cheers, mate.